What it is? What's up? Got your podcast in the cut. Uh, let me see my audio. Yeah, okay. We're going to just one take this because I just want to give it my rawest thoughts. So I just finished Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 uh, thrice upon a time. Uh, I, I like this movie so much that I'm willing to say that dumbass name. I still to this day do not like that. But symbolism is everything with uh, Hideaki, Hideaki and Ano, Anyo. I'm thinking Spanish. We'll just say Ano. Hideaki and Ano. Um, two hour and 35 minute movie. I believe it's the longest runtime in uh, the rebuild of Evangelion franchise. Uh, by quite a bit, actually. And... I mean, just to just 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 straight up say it, uh, perfect. Uh, I believe it's what eight years between this one and and three point uh, You know, two point to three point had like this uh, ridiculous like gap in uh, logic with two point ending supposed to be this. And then, I don't want to spoil that, but it's supposed to be the ending. And then, for some reason, like, 3.0 is kind of this, like, based on what the 2.0 um, ending was setting up, was supposed to be kind of this, like, free-for-all warfare thing that kind of, I think, would have pushed the gods versus the humans in a more direct and literal manner. But instead, we get 3.0, which the actual 3.0, which kind of was um, was not that <laughs> it wasn't that. But um, it was good. It was it was good. Uh, I like 3.0. I like to like I pretty much 1.0 to me still still seems like a waste of time. I know that's kind of you know maybe incendiary for some people, but I I think you can kind of get past 1.0. Um, spoil. I'm gonna just have spoilers from this point on. Uh, what actually? I'm gonna do spoilers. I'm not. I'm not sure. Have I spoiled anything already? I'm not sure. Uh, I'll, I'll try to avoid doing spoilers. If I do do any, you know, just at your own risk. Well, I'll try to avoid them. So, uh, 3.0. I'm reading back through the plot. 3.0. I have to actually go back and look at it. Uh, so yeah, they they Shinji. Um, I can do 3.0. 3.0 .1. came out what nine years ago. I'll, I'll do 3.0 with spoilers. So Shinji gets woken back up, and it's kind of like this whole long thing where Shinji, essentially it's kind of like the state Shinji was in um, after the, both before and after Asuka, Asuka gets killed in the uh, in end of Evangelion. Because what, what's important to note is that Ano does not avoid referencing 25 and 26 from the main series and end of Evangelion often, uh, the latter more in these rebuilds. And if you like, if you like those references, this, this, um, this final piece here, the episode four or movie four does an incredible job of tying them back. Uh, and it's both some very literal references and some kind of Easter eggs I don't want to talk about, but, um, I mean, it's just such it's just such a, a work of love, honestly. Uh, but yeah, so 3.0, I, I think, kind of does a lot to set this up. Like, it doesn't do anything too too grand. I mean, I, the fourth impact, I think, is, is pretty grand. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it does intentionally set up. Like, it does a lot, but like at the same time, it saves a lot. It holds a lot of punches. It's only 96 minutes, which is a lot, but it's like, look at this, and it's like 96 minutes, you know, but, um, I don't know, I really don't know where to start, like, I don't have any, it, it's just, let me just, I guess, work down the sections of a movie, I suppose, uh, cinematography, uh, it uses a heavy amount of, of 3D, because it has to, to do what it's trying to do, this is the most fleshed out version of what Arnold wanted to do with both of those endings, um, and those both came with financial restrictions especially 25 and 26 and to think those two are pretty much dude, i think the most crowd accepted theory is that both of those are pretty much two sides of the same coin 
both explain the HIP in different ways. And this movie does actually literally tie those. Is that a spoiler? I don't think it's a spoiler. It, it pretty much feels. Let's just say it's a it's a child. It's a it's a baby. It's the baby of those two movies. It takes both of those ideas and it finally gives like the, the satisfying conclusion. The the one thing you always hear from uh, even the most ardent of Evangelion fans is that there's always some hole in execution that you just have to accept because Hano's brilliance or the 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 um, reference he tries to, he tries to implement uh, some of the Bible imagery or or um, just think just how high Bri tries to go with some of these these moments lends itself to the idea that it could fail. And there's always been, I think, an idea that Ano, if he really had the absolute backing that you could give him, like, uh, enlightenment artist, if you just gave him a patron with like, unlimited funding and just time, he could produce something perfect. And I think he did. I, in, my, in my opinion, I, there's some, I mean, there's some things, like, some people might not like the way that um, the, I guess they're called failures of affinity are presented, but I, I mean, I, I think it's, you know, I think some people might not like it because of it's, it's, it both redoes the way those, those are presented in EOE, and it also redoes the way it's presented even in 3.3. Uh, but these are a different, version of infinity the nose um it was cool that they didn't go through the whole process i guess of um lc elling everything because you know that i guess kind of wasn't like i mean at this point you know what do you really need that again but they, they do a good job i think of bringing in the old and not trying to make it the whole movie uh the plot I mean, it, it really is different than EOE in a lot of ways. A lot of things do get done differently, but they still have the same kind of, I guess, ideology. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know. That it's it, it's di like some things are different. Like, I don't want to go into spoilers, really, but uh. Sometimes, some, sometimes things are replaced by other things that are still existing entities. Uh, but let, let me just say the plot is really good. I'm trying to read through things uh, here. There's no line on Emergency with Unit 9 to Unit 12. So unit I'm reading the plot again, trying to see because there's it's, it's a big thing. It's, it still does do this. You you can't just look at this at face value and Jesus Christ, my AC. I'm sorry. My apologies, but um, there's still a lot that happens that like it's it's, it's evangelion, right? Like it's gonna there's gonna be some moments where you just like don't entirely understand what you, you kind of use context clues. It's like some of your second grade, you see a big word, and you're like, I don't know what the hell that means. Then the teacher's like, look the words around it. That's Evangelion, and that's this movie still. It does a way better job of explaining things, and that's the best thing about this franchise, the rebuilds. Um, it's not, not everybody's going to like it. There's still some moments I don't like it, as an overall franchise, and that a lot of emotion, a, a, lot, of, a lot of exposition that would make some of these things feel more weighty. It's not there. I feel like I feel like there's there's going to be a disconnect between someone who vehemently enjoys this this work, this line, and then someone who with that that's someone being completely new to the Evangelion franchise and this being like the only thing they've seen. And then someone who's seen the other parts of the franchise and then also enjoys this. Like, I just think they would enjoy it a little bit differently. And there's a lot of context. Like, if you don't know, if you don't know what Oscar goes through in End of Evangelion, then seeing that flipped on his head, she gets like a, I think, a relatively short part 
it, it, as the uh, the thing actually breaks down towards the end, like it's not like like Gendo gets a lot, and I think Gendo is probably the least explained character in the previous parts of the franchise, and for somebody who's supposed to have a lot more weight behind him, uh, even I, it's more it's more you know kind of subtext in the, the first part, so the first part of the series, but in this franchise. Uh, he kind of becomes this this monolith for a lot of different concepts that make HIP blow. Because Sile, um, again, this is a spoiler for the, the, the third movie. Sile is done after the third movie, so the impact is all on his shoulder. You know, this time, this time around, so he becomes kind of a an. Um, Amalgam, amalg I can't fucking think of the word I want to say, but he combines a lot of different other concepts from previous works, and in that he finally gets to really be expounded upon. It's beautiful. I mean, like it's this is literally the first like this is a lot of sacrifice. Uh, people get mad about you know Karu, kind of his expedition being sacrificed uh, in the last movie, and then maybe some Asuka, uh and then Shinji kind of relation like lit like more physical relations. But I mean even then Asuka and, and him get a lot of time in this movie. Uh Ayanami kind of gets finally fleshed out as like a real character. I like I feel like look thinking about the Evangelion, you have the first Ayanami that's a character, and then she dies. And then the second Ayanami is pretty much just there until it's time to get um the the um I guess that it would be the third impact going. And then she's 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 what Karu kind of is in, in this and in, in, uh, 3.0. She's like this being that is the representative of the the dreams, I guess, of everybody. Uh, I forget the word they use, but the dreams of everybody that gets sucked in her LCO and, and EOE. And in this, she's an actual character. And she, I don't want to spoil it, but she's not like used the same way as in that. Like her her usage is staunchly different than in that series, and it's. In my opinion, for the best, because I mean, this person is, in honesty, I would say this person is the kind of the doll of the franchise. Like, if you think that Shinji is kind of like the the mouth of the franchise, the Naruto of the franchise, and Asuka is kind of like this, you know, crowd favorite that I think also the the author, the mangaka, I think uh, Ana really loves this uh oscar especially but everybody has kind of their own role and how special they are to this franchise and 23 of them but i think i9 has always been kind of the doll like when you think about like who's the mystique it's always ayanami so for the first time in, like 30 years ayanami is like finally more than just like this kind of bigger piece and i mean like literally if you look at the reviews for some people with 2.0 3.0 some of their problems is that she is doubly you know induced as the doll and i think it's subversive by ano in those parts because then we get you know kind of a little bit of development along as, as 3.0 progresses and then as you know shit happens because of that and then you get to 4.0 um where she's just you go through the whole process again of making her eye and ami and it's uh it's it's fantastic i, I don't I really don't know the music as well uh the closing song is fan fucking tastic um, the, I mean, I think, I don't, it reminded me of the song that's, but it's not the same song, it's not even close to the song, but it reminded me of the song that plays when the end of Evangelion, and then the end of that happens, like, towards the, you know, after the, after he rejects the uh, HIP and that, the song that's played in this part, uh, just reminded me of that for some reason, but I don't know if that actually is a song or not, I don't think it is, I have to go back and find it for myself, but, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, they actually use the the phrase neon genesis, neon genesis, which I don't believe is ever used at any point, um, and at any other Evangelion franchise. Uh, Gendo and you, yeah, 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 yeah. So Gendo gets his, yeah, and the the clo the closure uh, moments is very. I, I like them quite a bit. I really do. Um, yeah, 
Mm. Moments before being okay, so I this this part this there's a couple of twists that he does save that uh I was not aware of, but yeah, so let's just say that Oscar, the way she is using here. Some of the things she says at some points in this movie kind of make a lot more sense towards the back half. And I didn't know exactly why that was that, that things happened, but that's very interesting that because I, I actually I'm looking at the plot right now. And I think that that this was what it what it was. But OK, yeah, Oscar Oscar is. um still as important as ever to the to getting this series moving uh let's see yeah so i don't see the song list that actually was in uh the end of Avon, so i don't i don't know if i don't know if that's what i thought it was but it's, it's not this is a critical reception uh, is there anything else you talk about cinematography uh plot a uh, connection to the previous two uh, works. Uh, I, I can't think of anything else. I mean, I, it's a perfect movie. I mean, if you if you are a fan of, I, I mean, see the CGI is the only thing that's going to make a lot of people. I don't think a single thing about the plot is going to unnerve anybody. I think if you had a problem with a lot of plot holes at this point, I think almost all the big ones I can think about are answered in here. Um, some of them are more fleeting, but they're at least they're at least covered. Let's just say that, and they're covered in a way. I mean, you can you, you can get satisfaction with how it ends, in my opinion. Um, let's see, I'm looking at reception. Uh, Japanese academics and critics. Yeah, this is. I mean, it's a very deep and interesting uh, series, and even with kind of trying to scale back on some of that imagery, I think it still does a good job of of, uh, of doing that. Okay. Although it outwardly looks like a science fiction film, it is really a confessional L novel. What is an L novel? Corresponds to the events in the author's life. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of like what 25 and 26 were, was like literally like, Arnold's like life breaking down. Uh, and then, I mean, he, well, I can't spoil that. That's that's really huge, but I didn't know about it. I, honestly, I looked it up myself, but uh, the ending, there's a, Pretty massive uh, real life correlation with the ending that uh, really touches. Um, Comments on the Ano style, anime director shared this perception and said that Ano is more of a producer and director these days. I feel they lack the theme. Uh, portray praised the portrayal of his females characters way way better. I feel overall like, top. I mean not not way because I, I thought Masato was pretty. I thought she was pretty good in the first series. Uh, I think Ayanami just, you know, falls off like towards the middle half after a certain event happens. Um, I like Oscar throughout, but I mean, you, I can see why you, I mean, I, Oscar's like damn near despondent for like the last, like fourth of that series. So, oh my God, fuck this stupid thing. Um, praise the movie for fulfilling its promise of being easily approachable to a viewer not familiar with the original Neon Genesis Evangelion, reiter, reiterating as well as a standalone story, but also lacking the it to the series, the statutes, status. It's a pop culture phenomenon in view of the many emergency analyses of you shared by the cast. Uh, also noted the film's deeply diversive reception among Evangelion fans. Well, I will say that this ending is tonally different than I like the way I consider. Evangelion, um, the series, its ending was like a kind of a fake happiness that was just like shrewd and like very face level. And maybe that was intentional. I'm not sure exactly how he wanted it in, but like it just felt like not a very good happy ending, but supposed to be one. And then I consider it, I consider EOE ending as like just like almost nihilistic. Like it's, it's a, it's a quote unquote win for Shinji and I suppose the entirety of the human race because HIP was 
his own fake dream, fake bliss. But like, we look at that fucking planet. That's like not a W, right? Like it's almost. It's basically what the after. After the near third impact, that is the same planet as the end of EOE, except there's like pockets that survive. But this, this is different than than either of those. Include that unlike the 1997 film, 3.0 plus 1.9 tend to get views of mystery solved, but to provide a more straightforward answer, uh, agreeing the stickiness from the previous work. Reflecting a different cultural context and personal state of Hiyaki Anano, especially in his time at Ghibli, had greatly influenced him with a less multifaceted story where Shinji's character had been completely consumed by Anno attempting to break the otaku curse represented in a story by the curse of Evangelion, and said that it could only be explained background onto Anno's life. Now, this controversy will likely drive more heated discussion in the near future, with fan backlash coming even as small subsequent statements by Anno and other staff. Okay. Okay, so I I think the I think it's stupid. So this, this is talking about like now like more American reviewers. One guy said Thrice is not the charm for those hoping for a definitive, easy to understand ending for Evangelion. Like his predecessor, 3.0 plus 1.0, raises more questions than it answers. Time is a circle. That is a concept that is mentioned, time being a circle. But, like, at the same time, like, kind of kind of like Attack on Titan, there's a certain moment that half is supposed to break the quote-unquote circle uh, that operates here. Now, I'm not sure... With, with how many clones exist in this franchise, and you know, clones, the quote unquote idea of being original versus being a copy is also massive in this franchise, but with how many clones exist of certain primary characters, I'm not sure if this is an absolute ending. I don't know if he set up a possible I don't know, spin off of some shit. Like he 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 I don't definitely seems to be at this point content with ending this franchise, but he did give a quote saying something to the effect of, you know, maybe I'll have to spend more time with this one day. Or maybe I will want to spend more time with this one day. Um Express puzzle me at the ending, but noted that the film is complex, as people in different ways, and something that immediately triggers a repeat viewing reaction. It goes pretty meta. That's how I described it. Like, I thought it went more meta than either of those two other endings, which I thought were also very meta. Um, maybe the the series ending is more meta than the EOE ending. But this is definitely more easy to understand. I mean, on every step on the way, from 1.0 to 3.0 plus 1.0, this is easier to understand than um, the series is by, by a lot. By a lot. <laughs> but to, to a point of contention, the CG sure does look like CG. It, it, I mean, what can you do, man? Like, like I, yeah. I mean, yeah, but like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. The film has received a 10 billion yen, becoming the first ever film distributed by Toei to hit this box office milestone. And ending its theatrical run on July 21, pocketing 10.22 billion yen when attendance number of 6.69 million fucking people. Golly. Yeah, Anno said he wanted to break 10 billion and he fucking broke 10 billion. Holy shit. Shout out to Hideaki Anno. Uh, that's it for me, I think. How long am I going? 24 minutes? Uh, I think it's incredible. I really do. I think it's the ending that this franchise needed. Uh, I think it. I, if you really want to like think about how much shit Hayaki I know has been through in like the past twenty five years or so, you have to put something out that makes you feel like you won't ever have to go through this stuff again. Like, you 
you won't ever have to suffer. You won't have to be thrown through the mud. You want to feel like, I mean, I don't know how old Ano is. I would imagine like 60, 65, and then being like Pierce with Miyazaki. I would think somewhere around there. Um, you want to go to the grave. Not so I hope that you don't die anytime soon. You know, Asian people probably go live in 30 years easily. But you want to go to the grave knowing that you did everything you could to succeed at what you wanted to do. And I, I think he did that. There's apparently a documentary on Amazon Prime Video, which you can go watch this there. I didn't, but you can go watch it there. Um, I, I mean, this is it. I think this is something that even if Even if he whiffed, I think he could whiff knowing that he gave everything he could to the game. I really, I really, I really, I think that's the case. I think you can look at this and say, even if he missed this shot, I think he still missed it in the way he wanted to miss it. I think this is the perfect ending for Hiyakiano. I really do. Um, I'm lagging like shit right now, so it's probably about time for me to end this. Um, even people who I like, didn't like this, like I'm looking at a lot of Americans who I think, from what I gathered, Americans didn't like the uh, the previous ones more than the Japanese audience. This is a this is a quote I've seen apparently. Uh, I got I to gotta look at the documentary because a lot of the stuff comes from the documentary. The part where Ano was like, I did the rebuild movie so my friends would, and this is in quotations, I did a rebuild movie so my friends would have reliable income after getting fucked over. I know it got like a pretty, almost a cancellation type ending on the first part, but plus him saying he doesn't ever want to think about Ava ever again really does explain the why of the whole thing. I think it's, it's, I think it's a relief. I think it's reprieve. I think it's a lot of things for him that's not necessarily putting out a good work. And maybe that's kind of what they meant with him being more a producer and director. Like, he is a... He is someone who wanted this to get put out. And maybe some finer details that other people wrote for him. I'm not sure. But I think it was fantastic. I, mean, I really do. Uh, that's going to be it for me. I really don't know what to say at this point. Um... This was this was a satisfying in, in a in a a year where some of the greatest franchises um, in anime history had very I think rough uh, endings, uh, and then so many have came back and given us more. This is this in a world where people thought it was ended you know twenty years ago. It came back, and it it's better for it. I think it's in the rare moments where something can be, you know, almost buried by the culture. It came back from the ashes, and it might be better than it ever was. That's it for me. Peace.